Hello class, this is Sam the Skeleton here and we're going to be talking about the skeletal system today. Did you just talk? Oh yeah, cause skeletons can't move and talk cause they ain't got no muscles. Okay, irrelevant. Sorry Sam, you're out of the picture. Hey, this is Mr. J here, sorry about that interruption. We're gonna be talking about the skeletal system very briefly today, a really quick introduction, okay? So we're gonna talk about the four components of the skeletal system, you may be surprised. We'll also talk about four functions, that won't be too much of a surprise. And then I will briefly talk about a certain type of bone, which is a long bone, the components and how they are similar to the other shapes of bone. So let's get started. The four components of the skeletal system. I'll tell you the hardest one first. The bone. Ta-da. Get it? Hardest one, bone. Anyway. Second one will be tendons, which will attach bone to muscle. This is a type of dense regular connective tissue. The next will be ligaments, which is also a type of dense regular connective tissue, but it's going to be connecting bone to bone. Lastly, we're going to talk about Cartilage. And there's three types of cartilage I will briefly say. They will be hyaline, which is the most common. So hops, hyaline, cartilage. This is kind of the adhesion between uh, bones. So in your trachea, that's the rings, as well as in your ribs. There's some cartilage in your ribs. So this is going to be more of the adhesive. But it's also very strong and flexible. Uh, not crazy flexible, but just enough to keep things stable. There's also fibrocartilage which is going to be the padding. This is very, uh, it's resistant to pressure. So things like uh, your meniscus in your knee, things like the pubic symphysis in the, uh, in the pubic region where these bones are so close together they need some padding in between, as well as in your vertebrae, okay? So in between your vertebrae we'll have these discs that are made of fibrocartilage that resist um, really heavy pressure. So you can write that fibrocartilage resists heavy pressure. And lastly, elastic cartilage, which doesn't fit into either of the categories. And this is found in your ear and your epiglottis. Your epiglottis closes your trachea when you are swallowing. Um, it also stays open when you are breathing. Okay, and then your ears obviously are bendy as heck. So this is elastic cartilage. It's very flexible. So those are the four types. Let me briefly talk about these last three. These do not have a good blood supply, so they lack a good blood supply, which means that they heal incredibly slowly. So if you were to ever tear or rip apart or rupture any of these three things, it usually requires surgery, which is sad because it can't basically heal itself due to the lack of blood. So let me give you a quick little uh, example. So I partially tore my Achilles tendon. When I was running in college, I was stupid. I kept running even when it hurt. And so normally your tendons are gonna have this dense uh, connective tissue made of collagen, and it's all going to be dense regular. So it's all gonna be going in the same direction. That allows it to act as more of like a bungee cord of sorts so that it can stretch pretty good and then contract back. But if you stretch it too far or you work it too hard, it's gonna get frayed and it's gonna kind of tear. Luckily, I didn't completely rupture it, otherwise my calf would have balled up and it just would have ripped completely. I just partially tore it. So what happened was, parts of my collagen fibers were torn up, inflammation happened, plastic, but it doesn't have a good blood supply. And as the fibroblasts put down the collagen, it kind of put it down in a very poor manner. So my tendon was very weak as it was healing. So what I did was what's called eccentric exercises. So if my hand was my calf, what I did was I would raise it up on a surface and I'd slowly lower my calf down or slowly lower my foot down. So it would basically stretch my Achilles. So here, let's, maybe I can do that. So it'd stretch my Achilles, so it'd stretch that direction as I put this under pressure. So what that did was it basically strengthened those fibers to go in one direction every time. Strengthen, strengthen. It's like I was combing my muscle or my collagen fibers. So eventually, after a long time of uh, physical therapy, eventually my collagen fibers straightened out and they got actually stronger. So my Achilles is as strong as ever, which is a good thing. But it took, gosh, like six months because, again, it doesn't have a good blood supply. It does not heal very quickly, which is crummy. So take care of your tendons and take care of your ligaments as well. Some examples of ligaments, ACL, 
PCL, MCL, LCL, those all stand for anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, cruciate ligaments. Cruciate because it forms a cross on your knee in between your femur and your uh, tibia. And so if you tear one, all of a sudden it tears apart, you've got to surgically repair it because it's not going to heal on its own. And that's, that's kind of crummy. So anytime if you've heard of anybody tearing their ACL, it's a long recovery process. They're in that cast for a while. They're limping all over the place. It's really sad. So take care of your uh, ligaments by strengthening the muscles around it so they don't have as much load. Okay, they're not meant to bear the brunt of everything that you do. Okay, so that was a little quick digression into tendons and ligaments. Um, cartilage, I'm not going to talk about as much. Um, we talked about that in lab significantly. So the four functions of the skeletal system. We could probably assume several of them. Support and protection would be the biggest. So protection-wise, you think of your ribs protecting your internal organs, like your lungs and your heart. You think of your skull protecting your brain. And then support, obviously, the longer bones, your femur, uh, even your humerus, if you're, like, supporting yourself, it's for support and structure. Uh, the second one would be for movement. However, you have to have muscles to move. Uh, so whenever you see the skeletons dancing on Halloween shows, whenever you see Sam the skeleton talking or moving, that's not legit because they ain't got no muscles, and with no muscles, they ain't moving. So support protection, there's movement, there's calcium storage. So calcium slash mineral storage. 99% of your calcium in your body are stored in your bones, and that's important with homeostasis. We'll talk about that at a later date. And then lastly, blood cell production. So in your bone marrow, you're producing blood cells, both white and red. So those are the four main functions of the skeletal system. And you could also argue padding, perhaps, but that would kind of be more support because those fibrocartilage is going to give the padding in the structure. Awesome. So this is going to take just a couple minutes. There are four different shapes of bone that we'll talk about, maybe five. Um, but the four types are long and short. Okay, so long, they're longer than they are wide. Short bones usually look like small cubes, it's in like your uh, carpals, your wrist bones, and your tarsals, your uh, the beginning. It's like almost like the wrist of your foot. There are these little square-like uh, bones, so those will be the short bones. Then you've got irregular bones that look like crazy because they're all different shapes and sizes, so they're very irregular. And then there are flat bones, which are primarily in your skull. Your ribs are also flat bones. Okay, so those are the four shapes. The last one would be sesamoid, which would be like your patella. It's round. It's kind of floating by itself, so it's kind of in a group of its own. In any of those bones, in any of those five different types of bones, there will be two distinct layers to the bone. There's going to be the compact bone, which is going to be the base unit osteon, which is going to be, you'll, well, you'll see them later on, they're like tree rings, okay? So that's the functional unit of compact bone is osteons, whereas the spongy bone is going to be trabeculum. They're very, very similar when you look at them under a microscope. However, the compact bone will have more blood supply because there's a central canal in the center that will have blood flowing through it. Whereas the spongy bone has to get the blood supply from its outside environment in the bone marrow specifically. So in the spongy bone, you're going to have the marrow, which is also where the blood cells are produced if it's red uh, bone marrow. There's also yellow bone marrow we may talk about. It stores some fats, um, and that's helpful with paleontologists. We'll talk about that later on, too. But with a long bone, um, I just want to point out a couple parts. The epiphyses are on the tips, so epi means upon or on top of, so on top of both sides. Um, it's covering up the diaphysis. Okay, so the diaphysis is the long shaft of the long bone. Um, one other structure that I'll point out is going to be this epiphyseal line. We know that this is an adult femur, so this is the femur, the big bone right here. Okay, we know this is an adult because it's just a line. If the line was not there, and it's all cartilage there, that means it would be the epiphyseal plate, also known as the growth plate. Okay, so as a person grows, as they go like through puberty, bone, osteoblasts, which I'll talk about here in a second, build bone into that cartilage area until they can't grow anymore, and then it hits that line and it stops. So you can tell if you stop growing, if your epiphyseal plates now look like epiphyseal lines, okay? So I talked briefly about how we actually build bone, and there are going to be uh, three bone cells. 
So the three bone cells all will start with osteo, because osteo stands for bone. We will have osteo, so I'll say osteo. We'll have sites, which maintain the bone matrix. We will have blasts that build the matrix. And then we'll have clasts that break down the, the matrix. So blasts build, clasts crack. And when we are building the matrix, matrix consists of gels and fibers in connective tissue. So when we're talking about bone as a connective tissue, it's going to have the osteoblast sites uh, and uh, clasts. And they're going to be dealing with the gels and the fibers. The two main ones will be, for gels, what's called hydroxyapatite. And these are the mineral aspects of the bone. So this is where the minerals are stored. And I like to think of this as concrete because it's going to be laid down and it's going to be very strong, very strong and protective. Whereas the fibers are going to be collagen fibers like steel rods. I like to think of collagen fibers as steel rods because they're gonna give kind of that tensile structure and support. So combined, if you put steel rods through this sort of concrete uh, gel and it hardens, you've got a very strong supportive structure. So if we look at this long bone, with the compact bone, there's going to be a lot of minerals in the compact bone, preventing basically blunt force trauma to the bone. But there's also going to be collagen fibers that are sweeping through the spongy bone that basically prevent too much strain from going in one direction. It's going to redirect all that strain in different directions, preventing a bunch of load being put on the bone. So that's really beneficial. So that's how collagen and the minerals can kind of help out, giving us that uh, protection, support, and structure. If you take out the minerals, you're left with just the steel rods. And what your, the bones will do is they will become very bendy. Okay, so they'll be able to like bend in a bunch of different directions because they've got no concrete. But if you take the rods out, well now you've, you've basically left your bone all hollow. You don't have the rods there anymore, so there's a bunch of holes in your bone and they can shatter much easily. Okay, so the collagen, you could also say, makes it shatterproof. And the gels, the concrete, prevents bending. All right, I believe that is all I got through this week. Next week, we'll dive a little deeper into the units of the bone, how it gets its nutrients, what bone marrow is, why we get our bone marrow from flat bone rather than long bone, and we'll go all into that. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Study up. Y'all are doing amazing. This is Mr. J signing off. Sam, do you want to say bye? He's a skeleton. He can't talk or move.